I begin with the words of the Barbadian poet and philosopher Robin Fenty, whom this person obviously knows by her middle name, Rihanna. This is what you came for, folks. This is what you came for. I won't do the ooh, ooh, ooh part. That would be too much. We are incredibly excited to see you. How excited are we, Dean Garrell? That excited. <laughs> you are the champions. Class of 2020, you clearly have perfect vision. Welcome to college, the best 38 years of my life. I hope you will stay here forever. Well, let me rephrase that for your parents. Um, I hope that your four years here are immensely rewarding, both intellectually and financially, and that you graduate on time. But <laughs> so before we go any further, how about a big round of applause for the incredible volunteers on our move-in crew? Thank you, thank you for your incredible help today. You're remarkable, folks. Uh, and while I was helping with Move In today, I learned that your parents are apparently incredibly big fans of Bruno Mars's song, Uptown Funk, because I can't tell you how many times going up the stairs of Rouser, I heard your parents going, I'm too hot, I'm too hot, I'm too hot, I'm too hot. <laughs> so my name is Roger Casey. You can call me Dr. Raj. You can tweet to at Dr. Raj if you like. If you friend me, I will reciprocate, but only if your picture does not involve you in a red cup. And despite my apparent immaturity, I am McDaniel's ninth president. I live with my wife, Robin Allers. Wave over there, Robin. <laughs> We live in the White House across from the theater, surrounded by what we affectionately call the late night quiet zone. Uh, and we will have you over for dinner sometime, I promise. You like my bling? You like that? Kanye only wishes he had bling like this, folks. But I know some other folks from Maryland who do have bling like this. Katie Ledecky. Michael Phelps, if you don't know him, he's the Katie Ledecky of men's swimming. Yeah. I am clearly not worthy of these two because I only got the silver medal, but uh, you know, it still tastes good when you try this thing out. So I have been speaking, I think, for three minutes now, and according to the latest uh, research on attention spans, I have now maximized yours. So if you have a phone, as if, if you have a phone, you can respect us here by turning your phone on. I'm being totally serious. Uh, we want you to text, we want you to take video, take photos, update your status here, post whatever it is you're experiencing and learning here to Facebook, to YouTube, to Twitter, Instagram, wherever. But please, when you post something, we want you to put hashtag McDaniel2020. And I'm very serious about this because we want to watch our Google Analytics rock today. If you will just put hashtag 2020. So just respect my authority and do that if you would. And if you, uh, uh, a few of you want to take a picture up here of me, you can send it and tweet it to at Dr. Raj and I will print it and I will send it to my mother because she doesn't have a computer and she thinks the internet is satanic. So it would be okay if you do that. So class of 2020 and our other new students, by choosing McDaniel, you have already demonstrated to me that you have better decision-making skills than all of the Kardashians combined. And um, our faculty, our faculty, these lovely people beside me in the Hogwarts costumes, these folks, they're gonna be your partners for the next four years. And they join me in congratulating you on coming to America's number one college, according to a recent poll of my Facebook friends. So 
students, I want you to treat these faculty like the rock stars that they are because they live to teach you. They pine away in the fjords when you don't come to visit them during their office hours. So please reach out to these folks. A longitudinal study has proven that more than any other factor except for going to class, students who form personal relationships with faculty early in their college careers are considerably more successful in college. Close personal attention, that's what we're known for here at McDaniel, so please take advantage of this. These faculty will become your mentors and your friends, and I'm not talking about just for four years, they may be your friends for 40 years. Learn everything that you can from these brilliant and caring women and men. It's our privilege to teach you, and I promise you, we will learn a lot from you over the next four years. Like, maybe somebody can explain to me what is cake by the ocean. I don't understand this thing. So, parents, don't you make fun of your kids' lyrics, though, because remember, our generation left a cake out in the rain, and you remember that song, MacArthur Park. So, since arriving at McDaniel six years ago, I started a convention tradition, and it's what I live for. It is my tradition to lead the new students in a shout-out. Mix swagger is what I call it, hashtag mix swag. And in a minute, we are going to exclaim with some serious mix swagger, I am McDaniel College. Because you see, our college is not a bunch of buildings, it's not about place, it's not about a mascot, it's not even about the curriculum. A college is about people. And these people are now you. McDaniel is here for students first. And today, at this convocation ceremony, you officially become one of those students. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to count to three, and we're going to say or sign in unison, I am McDaniel College. And if you're shy about this, you can just tweet it to me at, at Dr. Raj, okay, because it takes all types. So, and family members, we want you to join in as well, because you are a part of the McFamily now, okay? Everybody get ready here. I've got to get my product placement out here because I want a video of this. All right, everybody ready? Okay, on three, I am McDaniel College. You ready? One, two, three. I am College. One more time like you mean it. One, two, three. I am College. Last time, one, two, three. I am College. Word up, you are McDaniel College. Give yourselves a huge round of applause. So let's get on with convocation then, the official beginning of your college career. And here's what's going to go down. I brought along a couple of VPs to lead you on all the things that you need to know. First, we're going to hear about our faculty from our provost and dean of the faculty, Dr. Julia Jaskin. And then we're going to hear from our Dean of Students and Vice President for Student Affairs, Beth Garrell. And finally, I'll come back to deliver a brief address, which will go viral and get at least 43 hits on YouTube. And tonight, after our candle walk, we're going to gather outside in Red Square, and you will get to take part in McDaniel's most sacred tradition. You will get to ring the college bell, signifying your official entrance into the McDaniel community. And then you will get to ring it once again when you graduate. In between, hands off. And meanwhile, your parents, who are roughly my age, will go home, they might cry a little, they'll pour a glass of Chardonnay, they'll pull out their vinyl, and they will play Anita Ward's 1979 disco hit, Ring My Bell, in your honor. You know it, parents. So, take out your cell phones, update your status on Facebook to say, I love McDaniel, hashtag McDaniel2020, Better prove it to me now. And in the words of my dear friend, Will I Am, let's get it started in here. So, Madam Provost, hit your hallelujah. Welcome to McDaniel, class of 2020. I'm Julia Jaskin, Provost and Dean of the Faculty. And it's my pleasure today to introduce you to the wonderful faculty who will educate and support you during your time on the Hill. I know you've been in touch with them as your advisors over the summer, and over the next few days you will meet them in person. I want to tell you what makes the faculty such an incredible group of people and why they will be such an important part of your lives during the next four years. 
When they are not in their classrooms and offices, they are doing researches, research in our libraries and labs, publishing articles and books, and attending conferences and meetings around the world. McDaniel professors are experts in their field. In fact, 99% of our tenure track faculty hold a PhD or highest degree in their discipline. But what makes our expert faculty most special are the personal connections they will form with each of you as they become your mentors and coaches. Connection is the hallmark of our living learning community here on the Hill. Starting this semester, your professors will help you connect academic concepts in compelling and sometimes surprising ways. If you are enrolled in Mathematics Professor Simonelli's first year seminar, Intro to Game Theory, you'll be learning the decisions that players should take to secure the best possible outcomes for themselves and others, and then understand how this concept can be applied to the fields of economics, business, political science, biology, sociology, computer science, and sports. If you enroll in a class with history professor Shen Fang, learning about the wrought iron art industry in China could even turn into a study trip to Wuhu in the Anhui province of China, as it did for six students this last year. And if you're fortunate enough to take a course with art history professor Gretchen McKay, you could find yourself donning the garbs and grabbing the paintbrushes of Vincent van Gogh, arguing that art must change and that color can convey meaning in a role-playing game set in the 1889 World Exposition in Paris. Research collaborations with your professors will connect what you've already learned in classrooms to the aha moments of discovery and the generation of new knowledge. After spending the fall semester honing their skills in storytelling, photography, research, and survival without cell phone and internet, a dozen students in the Forest Online course traveled deep into the Peruvian rainforest to gather, their no to gather notes, photos, films, recordings, and other materials they needed to produce compelling stories that can, and perhaps will, change the world. English professors Mary Bendel Simso and Leroy Panic worked with student research, researchers on the continued development of the online Westminster Detective Library. Through this student faculty collaboration, they have unearthed more than 1,200 works of short detective fiction published in the United States before 1891, texts that represent an amazing database for future research in the area. Many of our faculty have shaped their research agendas to enable them to co-publish with their students. Dozens of students across all disciplines present that research at professional conferences each year. Students like those in Professor Holly Chalk's senior seminar, who recently presented their student faculty research on disability identity and gender negotiation styles at the Eastern Psychological Association in New York. Connect with your professors and discover what research interests you in exercise science, biology, physics, computer science, sociology, world languages, music, theater, and more. You're sure to add to your resume, and who knows, you might just find a new passion along the way. This convocation would not be complete without also introducing you to someone whose name should be very familiar to you by now. Whether you've connected with her through emails or Facebook, Dr. Karen Violante, the Associate Dean for First Year Students, is your dean. You may have noticed that for the last three months, Dean V, as her students lovingly call her, has been ever-present, answering questions as quickly as you could ask them. Her focus at McDaniel is to support a positive academic transition for all new students to the college, and I honestly can't imagine a better first ambassador for you. Dean V embodies exactly the kind of genuine care you will come to learn is a hallmark of the faculty and staff community here at McDaniel. Dean V, will you please stand and be recognized? Your professors and deans are a well-connected group, and they will point you to a world of possibilities. You will hear their voices around you, read this article, attend this concert, meet this alumnus, submit your innovative idea to our new business plan competition, study in Kathmandu, Budapest, or Glasgow. I have this advice, accept their invitation 
to engage deeply in your educational experience, both within the classroom and beyond. Travel with chemistry professor Dana Ferraris to a local high school to talk to students about the many exciting career pathways available to them in the sciences. Let cinema professor Jonathan Slade connect you to alumni and associates in the film and television industry. Join an environmental studies professor Mona Becker's stream cleanup and sinkhole assessment community projects. Take the opportunity to have Professor Amy McNichols advise you as a Global Fellow. Connect with Professors Bryn Upton and Julie Routson to explore the possibilities offered by our newest program, the Encompass Distinction, which will hone your entrepreneurial skill sets and help you take your business ideas to the next level. This faculty will stretch your mind, make you think in new ways, and help you connect the dots between all you learn. Whether you are studying the ethics of stem cell research or the sociology of race, reading graphic novels or the Constitution or Nietzsche, doing, experience, doing experiments in thermoluminescence or looking at abstract paintings, speaking Arabic or writing a computer program. They will advise you and mentor you. They will inspire you. Students in the class of 2020, you have the privilege of studying with one of the finest groups of teachers anywhere in the world. And now I ask the entire faculty to please stand up and be recognized. Class of 2020, it is my pleasure to present to you formally the faculty at McDaniel. Okay, I need the members of the class of 2020 to stand up. I'm going to wake you up for a minute. I want you to turn around and meet a couple of your classmates. Shake their hand and tell them who you are. <laughs> I feel the love. <laughs> okay, have a seat. My dear friends, the day is finally here. You are now um, an official member of the McDaniel College Class of 2020. You are McDaniel. Give yourself a round of applause. You and your classmates come from 17 countries and 23 states in DC. One of you has a very special bond that none of the rest of your class can tout. You are special. Bailey Boyle, will you please stand? Bailey, where are you? Right there. Bailey. Bailey, you and I come from the great state of Illinois. <laughs> so here's a little gift for you. <laughs> a little Land of Lincoln gift from your Auntie Beth, and I'll be stopping by your room later on this evening to sing a few choruses of the Illinois State Song. Thank you, Bailey. <laughs> Fifty-two percent of you are male and forty-eight percent of you are female, and there are two sets of twins in your class. The top female names are Emily, Rachel, and Abigail. The top male names are Andrew, John, and William. Sadly, there are no Rogers and there are no Beths, which is a shame because we were going to give out four years of free tuition if you had either one of these names. <laughs> 43 of you celebrate your birthday in May with a three-way tie for second place where members of your class open their birthday presents in April, July, and October. Eight of you celebrate your birthday on October 25th. One of you has a very special bond that none of the rest of the class can tout either. You are also special. Michael Gallagher, would you please stand? Michael, you're the only person in this class who shares my birthday on December 20th. <laughs> Do 
Just a little gift for you, Michael. I got your back. <laughs> I've got keys to your rooms and access to your grades. <laughs> The class of 2020 also excelled in high school extracurricular accomplishments and activities. 69% of you played a sport, 56% of you did community service beyond the required hours, 47% of you worked outside of school, 30% of you were captains of your athletic teams, 31% of you will play here on a green terror athletic team, 30% of you participated in music and theater, 26% of you participated in National Honor Society. 53% of you filled student leadership positions. And 21% of you were in the top 10 of your class. That's pretty darn good. <laughs> Family ties are also very important. Nine of you have parents who are members of the McDaniel College community. But for as many ways as you come together as a group and are important, it's when we start to separate you out as individuals that the power of who you are really begins to show. This is the very first class that includes the first cohort of Teachers for Tomorrow, which is a partnership between McDaniel College and the Howard County Public School System. And as desired, we are enrolling a very diverse group of future teachers. They come from six countries originally. They speak four languages besides English, and they're very excited about being the pioneers of this program. And they are the only freshmen that we can say already have jobs when they graduate. <laughs> In the area of multi-talented competitors, your class contains two gold medal, medal figure ice skaters, a competitive Irish dancer, and a state champ in surfing. In the category of most compassionate, one of your classmates participated in a breeding program for tree frogs, jointly produced videos about amphibian con conservation, and ultimately lobbied their state legislature with her state representative to designate the Pine Barrens tree frog to be the North Carolina state frog and then a state salamander. It's no surprise that this student won multiple state awards in the area of conservation. One of you created a 3,000-piece origami swan, while another of your classmates auditioned for both The Voice and America's Got Talent. Members of your class are incredible fundraisers. You raised thousands of dollars for Make-A-Wish, Cool Kids Cafe, and high school fundraisers. One of you helped your father to raise $38,000 for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society through a 10-week challenge. And one of you were named Carroll County Youth Philanthropist of the Year. In the area of unique experiences, one of your classmates completed the FBI Future Agents in Training Program, and one of you runs your own baking company. My, oh my, you are an amazing group of students. So let's talk. Four years is a short time to cultivate the skills and knowledge you'll need to take on immense responsibilities in society and the workplace. So I ask every one of you, what are your plans for the next four years? What are you going to do for the next four years? What are you going to do for the next four years? As you begin to ponder these questions, I'm going to share some important pieces of advice that will be critical for you to consider as you make your journey. College is a clean slate. You can be anything you want to be here. You can repurpose, reinvent, and redesign yourself. We are a liberal arts institution that offers a broad range of cultural and intellectual opportunities for you to experience here. The college will encourage thoughtfulness, reflection, and an emerging wisdom. How will you take advantage of these opportunities? The next piece of advice, do better than what's expected. Give everything you can to everything you do. Give everything you can to everything you do. I challenge you that every two to three weeks, I want you to ask yourself, if you were writing a reference letter about yourself, what would you say? If you can't say very much, you've got some work to do. The next one is don't waste your time. Use it wisely, or it will use you. Get involved with student organizations, attend conferences, go to speaker events, plays, musical performances, and athletic events. Beginning next week, you will be receiving a weekly calendar of events under your door in your room. 
So start thinking now about Jan term trips and internships and shadowing experiences and summer research opportunities. Be an exec member of a club, be an RA, be a peer mentor, be an admissions ambassador. The clock is ticking. How will you use your time? Next one. Always act like your mother's watching you. And parents, see me later for the new in-room camera option that we've just offered for $200 a month. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Students, remember, you are what you tweet, what you post, what you Snapchat, and what you Instagram. If it goes on the internet, it's there to stay. People you have never met will make judgments about you. Every post and every picture matters. Do you really want to limit future opportunities that may come your way? Next one is act like an adult and you'll be treated like an adult. This community of staff and faculty and upper class students will hold you accountable for your behavior. The student, code, student conduct code, the honor code, on campus, off campus. How you act and behave matters. This includes how you treat each other too. McDaniel College is a community of dignity, decency, kindness, and respect. You are now a member of this community. Next one, take a tech break. When you're walking across campus, look around at those around you and interact with them. Watch the seasons change on this beautiful campus. And there is no real substitute for interacting voice to voice with another human being. And at night, put your cell phone away and look where you're walking. Focus on your surroundings and be safe. Next piece of advice. Relationships really do matter. Julia mentioned this earlier. Get to know the faculty and staff. Everyone in this community has something to offer you. From the ground staff who clean your sidewalks in sub-zero temperatures, to the food service staff who comes in at 4 a.m. to start to cook you breakfast, to the campus safety officers that 24-7 do everything they can to make this campus safe. Relationships and networking is very important, now and forever. So my question to you is, how will you build relationships and cultivate networking opportunities over the next four years? When challenges arise, it's crucial that you learn how to navigate a solution. Your parents may want to step in, or you may even want them to fix the problem. Don't do it. Learning to solve problems and issues are just as important as what you learn in the classroom. Ask any accomplished CEO, president of a college, high-level military official, and your grandmother, and you'll hear them all say the same thing, that problem solving is the key to success in your career, your personal life, and your community service work. So I ask you, how will you handle challenges that come your way? Next one is be safe. Lock your door, carry your keys, don't walk alone. If you walk into a room or a party and your brain says, hmm, I should probably leave, leave. Get sleep, eat healthy meals, double pepperoni pizza, strawberry Pop-Tarts, and an energy drink really is not a fulfilling meal. Get your flu shots, wash your hands. It's just as important to pay attention to things like depression and anxiety. If you find yourself struggling with something that life has thrown into your pathway, reach out for help. A friend, a faculty member, an RA, a peer mentor, someone in your family, one of our counselors. It's always important to remember that you are not alone here. We get up in the morning thinking about you and what we can do to help you be successful. Everything about McDaniel College is designed and designated to encourage a community that will serve you as a support network. The small classes, the close relationships with faculty and staff, these are the people that will make it happen for you. And finally, if you haven't learned to live, then you haven't learned to give. Get involved with community service opportunities, both on and off campus. Help your friends who are struggling with something in their life. Walk them to the counseling center. Open doors for each other. Say something kind to someone every day. Pay for the elderly man's dinner when you're sitting at IHOP with your friends who's over by himself in a booth. Pick up trash that's lying in the middle of a sidewalk. Offer someone looking lonely at dinner or lunch in Glar to sit down with you and your friends. Maya Angelou once said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. 
Class of 2020, it's a pleasure to have you here, and it's a pleasure and a privilege to welcome you here. Thanks. I always feel a bit presumptuous offering advice. After all, my life is different than your lives. My experiences differ from yours. My generation differs from yours. So I try to stick to things that I know with some certainty. So here's one. I feel comfortable advising you that if you get drunk and belligerent and you trash a gas station bathroom, Saying that you were robbed at gunpoint by the police is probably not going to be an effective excuse. I have evidence that that does not work. <clears throat> and I am pretty sure that the advice offered to us on mayonnaise jars is perhaps the best philosophy to live your life by. Keep cool, do not freeze. It's my mantra. Yeah. But if you are suspicious of my generation trying to offer you advice, I have to tell you, I understand. I realize this is the first presidential election in which most of you can vote, and look what we have given you. <laughs> On behalf of the democracy, I, would, I wish to apologize to you, and I want you to grow up and fix this, please. <laughs> The beauty of studying the liberal arts is that you don't have to take my advice. You don't have to take the advice of my generation, nor the advice of anyone for that matter. Our goal is to expose you to the knowledge and wisdom of thousands of years of the world's best and worst thinkers, scientists, artists, and then you can make your own decisions. You will begin to learn the difference between knowledge and wisdom. For example, knowledge is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting a tomato in a fruit salad. Those are simple differences between them. You will learn that the liberal arts are far less concerned about answers and far more concerned about questions. And the first of these questions is the one, so what? Why are you here? I really hope that you're in college to be about something more, more greater than the accumulation of knowledge. I hope college will radically change your life. It did for me. As a first generation college student from a rural area of South Carolina, college opened up my world. I studied things I didn't know existed. I learned about cultures and cultural opportunities of which I had never dreamed. I studied in other countries. I became extraordinarily comfortable with the constant feeling of discomfort that knowledge often brings us. I developed a profound sense of the importance of diversity. And most of all, I discovered my purpose in life, to teach. And look where it led me, but I never dreamed. Mark Twain once wrote that the two most important days in your life are the day that you are born and the day that you find out why. The best I can tell, you got that first day pretty well covered, so it's now time for us to work on that second day. These people in the funny hats over here are here to help you figure out why am I here. We are all impressed, tremendously impressed, by all that you've achieved so far in your relatively short lives. We've examined your high school grades, your test scores, your leadership roles, your extracurricular activities, your personal essays. In all sincerity, we are impressed. If we weren't impressed, you would not be sitting here in Gill Gym right now. I gotta admit, I, hearing this list of things you've accomplished, I feel a little outclassed. I mean, when you were 17, you were raising funds to build a school in Haiti as part of an alternative spring break. 
when I was 17, I was cutting my neighbor's grass. But now, all of what you've done, in many ways, is irrelevant. You start over again. So the next question is, now what? You've all created pretty impressive resumes, but to borrow an idea from the brilliant columnist David Brooks, now it's time to quit working on your resume and to start working on your eulogy. What are people going to say about you when your finite window of time and opportunity is complete? I've got to tell you, I have never heard anyone's SAT scores cited at a funeral. You know, it's your first day of college, so I don't want to sound macabre here. But in other words, to paraphrase David Brooks, I'm encouraging you now to transition from thinking about a life of successes to thinking about a life of significance. What difference are you going to make in this world? I want you to start thinking heavily about this question. So what? Your generation coined an acronym that fascinates me, YOLO. You only live once. I don't think Drake actually said it first, but he certainly popularized this motto. But I think there are two distinct brands of YOLO. One of those is best articulated, I think, by Pit Bull. You know, no pare la fiesta, you know, don't stop the party. Or as Jack Black would say about this form of YOLO, YOLO is just carpe diem for stupid people. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the other version of YOLO, though, I think is best articulated by someone like Eminem, who tells you, you only get one shot, do not miss a chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Yo! So, which YOLO will be your choice? You know, I think people get sucked into that first version of YOLO by another four-letter word, FOMO. So I'm going to drop the F-bomb here. Fear. FOMO. The fear of missing out. According to the world's most formidable writ of knowledge, and I am, of course, talking about the Urban Dictionary, FOMO is, quote, a form of social anxiety, a compulsive concern that one might miss an opportunity or satisfying event, often aroused by posts seen on social media websites. I get it. You want it all. But according to one of my generation's lyrics, Faith No More, you want it all, but you can't have it. <clears throat> These lyrics describe an inherent tension between two cultures. On one hand, the culture of instant gratification, and on the other hand, the culture of delayed gratification. Instant gratification. For all your lives, things have been just a click away. Facts appear on Wikipedia, photos materialize on Instagram, and soon the drones of Amazon Prime will be delivering your purchases at your window in an hour. So I really hate to disappoint you on this one, but the wisdom that you gain from the liberal arts is not going to be instant. Learning is solidly in the world of delayed gratification. It takes time, and often, truthfully, it's not gratifying at all. It is anguishingly discomforting. Learning is counter to everything pop culture wants to sell you. You've grown up in a world that does everything it can to try to make you happy, comfortable, and safe. And you're now entering an era of intellectual exploration that is going to leave you quite often pissed off, angry, and vulnerable. You live in a world in which you can surround yourself with websites, newspapers, Facebook friends, and media that only offer opinions with which you agree. But now, you're going to have to listen to and analyze a myriad of ideas and positions, some of which are directly counter to your most sacred points of view. Folks, that is how you learn. And you're going to have to work, work hard to master a discipline. It is not going to be easy. To flourish, you will need resilience. To flourish, you will need grit. 
I was fortunate enough in June to be chosen as a participant for the New York Times Higher Education Roundtable. And through that program, I got to spend time with Dr. Angela Duckworth, who's the author of Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance. Doc Dr. Duckworth has one of the most widely viewed TED Talks ever. She has extensively researched why do some people make it out of difficult life situations and thrive while other people just collapse and fail. And her findings demonstrate that achievement tends to fall down to this category of something called grit. Her research also shows us that grit often trumps talent. And if you watched the Olympics over the past few weeks, you saw a lot of examples of grit triumphing over talent. The great news, though, according to her research, is you can learn grit. It's not innate. And she says that grit is composed of four characteristics. Interest, passion, purpose, hope. I wish you lots of grit. And it starts with your interests. And I encourage you to explore not only what you love, but explore what you don't know. Have the courage to experiment with new subjects, to attend lectures on things that you don't know anything about. From your interests will grow passions. Passions require sacrifice. They require putting FOMO in check. Malcolm Gladwell writes about the 10,000 hour rule and he says to become excellent at anything it requires roughly 10,000 hours of practice. Do you think Katie Ledecky won all of those goals with YOLO FOMO? I mean, she was in the pool at 4 a.m. every day. Passion is the antithesis of instant gratification. And then, out of passion grows purpose, when you began to understand how that thing that you love can make a difference in the world. And that's when you discover vocation. The, theologi the theologian Frederick Beekner has described vocation as that place where your deep joy meets the world's deep need. Passion meets up with purpose. So the final stage of grit requires hope. And hope, I believe, is probably the hardest step of all. The most realistic understanding of hope that I know of is expressed in something that's called the Stockdale Paradox. Admiral Jim Stockdale was the highest ranking officer who was taken as a prisoner of war in the Vietnam War. And he survived eight years of near endless torture and brutal conditions to walk free while many other prisoners, many of them younger and more able than he, they mentally broke down or they died. And when asked how he survived, this is what he said, quote, you must retain faith that you will prevail in the end regardless of the difficulties. And at the same time, you must confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. So who didn't survive according to Admiral Stockdale? The optimists. So here's the paradox. There is a huge difference between hope and optimism. I am not an optimist. I don't believe that things are always going to be okay. I actually believe in a world that is much more like it's described in the famous Stephen Crane poem. A man said to the universe, sir, I exist. The universe replied, that does not create in me a sense of obligation. The world that we live in is ambiguous. It is harsh. It is unpredictable. It is rapidly changing. Safety is an illusion. Suffering is a constant. But these are not the words of a pessimist, not at all. These are the words of a realist. And I think Stockdale offers you some great advice because despite this painful and dark reality that our world faces sometimes, I have extraordinary, extraordinary hope. And I have hope for one reason one reason only, and that is you, you. I'm sorry to put the burden on you, but you are our hope for the future. I believe thoroughly you will change it positively, and I don't believe that optimistically. I believe that brutally, realistically. You want to know why? Because we are equipping you with the greatest educational tool ever known to humanity, the disciplines of the liberal arts. They will change you if you let them. They will enable you to conquer your fears. 
They will not be easy to master. They will frustrate you. They will anger you. They will sometimes defeat you. But if you have grit, the grit to respond to this test, they will empower you to live a life of significance. You only get one shot. And I believe yours will be significant. Challenge yourself over the next four years. Be resilient. Take the hard path. As Robert Frost so eloquently wrote, two, ver two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Take the hard road, class of 2020, and it will make a difference in your lives. My name is Roger Casey, and I believe in this message. Thank you very much. We now want to bring you into our McDaniel culture through song, and I'd like to invite a select group of students to come forward, and they're going to be singing for us the McDaniel alma mater. Uh, they're going to sing this one time through, and you can join in, and the words uh, are in your program. Please stand. Please join us on this round. So it is now my privilege to formally introduce you into the McDaniel College community, and I do so with all of the obligation, rights, and privileges that are integral to this community. Congratulations and welcome. <laughs> the class of 2020, you will follow the marshals out through the side rear exit when we process, and family and friends would you please wait until all the students have recessed before leaving? You'll exit back again through the main doors. We'll ask that you find your student outside, give them some sage words of advice, a big hug of encouragement and final farewell, and head out of here. So their undergraduate journey begins. Thank you, folks. <laughs> 